So first question I have for you, it's a pretty, pretty obvious one, but why should a developer choose Android? As opposed to other platforms? Mm -hmm. So Android is an open platform, so that, that sort of makes a big difference. And um, it's sort of a first time that we are seeing a separation between the hardware and the software in the phone device. So, so far, developers are kind of used to looking at as a, a box, as, as a one piece, mm -hmm. where you basically have to pick the manufacturer and pick the platform all at once. Here we have a separation. So a developer choosing Android can deploy that on many, many different gizmos. So uh, it's pretty agnostic to the actual device, which is a really nice thing. Uh, secondly, it's an open source platform, meaning that there's very little risk from, um, you know, provider going down or uh, changing the strategy around the platform and so forth. So uh, those are all uh, pretty important, I think, mm -hmm. decisions. And uh, finally, um, as a developer, you know, there's a there's a very big user uh, market for for Android applications. So Android is currently number two in sales um, in the U.S. Um, it's it's selling it's activating over 150 thousand uh, devices every day, so it's pretty big uh, market for the apps. Yeah, I saw that data point, it was pretty yeah. striking. Now, are there reference points from other languages that an Android developer could could apply as they move into the Android space? So Android is based on Java. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're writing Java code. Uh, now, it is a special kind of um, packaging of Java, so it's slightly different than, than regular Java, but if for any developer that is coming from Java background, um, it takes, it's pretty quick to pick it up uh, because the, the patterns are very similar. So the way, the, the approach to, to everything is pretty much the same. Uh, the biggest difference uh, between the regular Java and Android is uh, around user interface. So the way that Android approaches user interface. So it's a brand new set of libraries, but the API is very similar to what one might have been uh, using before with Swing and AWD in, in Java. So, mm -hmm. uh, so fairly simple to pick up. Uh, kind of an odd question, but is there a philosophy that sort of underlies Android? Is it is it openness? Is it ease of use? Is it an alternative to the iPhone? Something something along those lines. Um, in terms of development philosophy, um, there there is quite a bit of that. Um, so it's it's a very pragmatic approach to to development. So unlike um, regular Java, which in my opinion is overly engineered and there's just too much stuff predicting the future that may or may not, not never happen. Um, Android's Java or Android's approach to development is very pragmatic. So it's very much you know what, what people are needing today to, to get a job done, to, to improve the, the experience in the mobile platform. Um, so that's one big difference. Um, second big difference is that it's a shared product. So it is a product that is owned by many, many different constituencies. So Google being one, but also many other um, companies and so on. So um, that also has to do with how it's designed, how pieces are contributed back to the to the uh, uh, project, to the open source project. Now, one thing I've been reading about quite a bit lately is that with all the different flavors of Android that are out there and the different devices and the fact that it is open, you're going to get different variations on the operating system. Right. What's your take on the fragmentation issue? Is it is it actually a problem, or do you think it's been overblown? Um, the fragmentation is something that comes up as a risk factor um, for uh, companies and clients that I work with that are adopting Android. Um, on one hand, um, so keep in mind when Google started the Android project, their goal was, wasn't a specific device. Their goal was many, many different devices, many, many different comp companies adopting this platform. So fragmentation is sort of built into the nature of the project. So it's going to there are going to be different flavors of Android out there. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, what's, what's bad is for a consumer not knowing what application is going to be able to run on what device. And to address that, recently um, Android uh, project has released the compatibility, um, a definition of what compatibility means. Um, so basically to, to claim to be a compatible uh, application, you have mm -hmm. to self-test your app and make sure that it runs on a specific platform. So, so there is a way to manage that. Uh, but it's not governed by any centralized body. It's very, it's very much open to, it's basically self-testing, self-evaluation, and such. So it's a different sort of approach to that. There, there's no fees to pay or mm -hmm. anything like that to, to basically get approved or certified. Mm -hmm. 
So um, it does create a little bit of a the Wild West experience mm -hmm. um, for consumers and specifically for corporate customers. Uh, but at the same time, that sort of approach um, ignites creativity and innovation. So they're basically, you know, two edges of the same sort. So sure. Uh, so the last question I have for you, and it kind of dovetails with the creativity and the mm -hmm. innovation stuff. Google recently released App, in, uh, App Inventor. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> what's your take on that? Do you feel that that's going to uh, democratize development, and do you think that it's a good thing, and do you think that it could actually spread to other operating systems? I think it's a good thing. For, it's, a, it's a right tool for certain jobs. Um, and uh, so. Uh, basically, what it does is it makes it easier for very simple applications to be to be developed, and a big chunk of very simple uh, of applications out there are rel relatively simple. Uh, so that means that we're also going to have a proliferation of applications. Mm -hmm. So is that 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 is a good thing as long as we have a way to sort of sort through all those applications, um, which is fine. Secondly, so from that's from the tool standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, Another thing that it does, it also separates the concerns when it comes to application development. So it basically makes it avail uh, able for a team to, be, to, to break down which part who's working on, which is sort of a big deal. So it, it sort of create a, uh, creates a framework type environment that we've had in the web, web world, but we haven't really had in the mobile world. So I, th I think those are good things. Um, there is a good chance that it's going to equivalent sort of frameworks are going to appear mm -hmm. in other platforms as well. So, great. Thank yeah. you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you.